Welcome to the Divorce View Talk Show. Hello, it's Joni Winberg, Divorce Mentor and Facilitator of the How to Emotionally and Financially Survive a Divorce Group Coaching Program. It's always my pleasure to do this show with my co-host, Rosalind Sadaka. Hello, Roz. Hi, Joni. Good to see you again. I'm Rosalind Sadaka, recognized as the voice of child-centered divorce. I'm a divorce and parenting coach and founder of the Child Centered Divorce Network and author of How Do I Tell the Kids About the Divorce? We have an exceptionally uh, wonderful qualified guest with us today. I'm very proud to introduce you all to Cindy Harari. Cindy is a family uh, law attorney who basically focuses on the mediation side of the equation, which as you know, we all so strongly endorse for making divorce a, a better outcome for everyone in the family. So Cindy, I want to welcome you and we're excited to talk to you because you always have such valuable insights to share with us. Thank you so much, Roz. It's a pleasure to be here with you and Joni. Thrilled you're here. So our topic today is, in fact, is it's pretty similar as far as how to do divorce differently or really saying also what people are unaware of concerning divorce. And since you have a lot of great information, as Ross said, on this topic. And the first thing we want to talk about is some of the behind the scenes things that are going on uh, during the divorce process. And how please fill in and you know start where you feel would be comfortable, but also great info for our listeners. Okay. Um, well, starting at the very beginning really involves starting before the beginning of the divorce process. And what I have found in my years of practice as a mediator and a parenting coordinator and an attorney is that most people don't know what to expect. And what I have been able to do is lay the groundwork for people to understand what they need to do. For example, we know that it takes a lot of time and thought to begin the divorce process. So, you know, the, uh, the thought process is very, very important. But before you go and say, I'm going to file for divorce, there's a lot of things that you need to know. The first is, in most jurisdictions, when you file for divorce, that starts a time clock running uh, in the judicial system. In most places, when you file a, a motion for divorce, you file your pleadings, that starts 180 days on the court's calendar. And there is a general expectation that your divorce, your parenting plan, everything having to do with your finances will all be done within that six month period. It's pretty unrealistic. And a lot of people besides having the general anxiety of going through a divorce, the emotional upset, when they find that they are under this time pressure and dealing with lawyers, it becomes very, very difficult. The first thing that has to happen in the process before you even file for divorce is to understand that you are going to be doing two things that are simultaneously but very difficult one, you are going to be breaking down the financial business aspect of your marriage. At the same time, you're supposed to be creating a long-term loving co-parenting relationship. So that's extraordinarily challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it just sounds like it's impossible because it pretty much is. You know, we try to get help people to do that. But I think what people need to understand first is that when you file for divorce, you have to file certain pleadings. If you have not filed a financial affidavit, that will be the very first thing a lawyer will want to see because that has to be filed with the court. My suggestion to anybody who's thinking about divorce is to get hold of a financial affidavit form. They are typically available online uh, from your local jurisdiction. You can go to uh, Florida courts or New York courts and you can find most of, the, well, typically all of the forms because you really are not required to have a lawyer when you file for divorce. It's a civil action, but an attorney is not required. But of course we know attorneys can bring a lot to the table. So before you get into the process, fill out your financial affidavit. That will show you 
not only what you have between you and your soon-to-be former spouse, but it will also show you what you need to survive on a monthly basis or a yearly basis, not only you, but your children. Because one of the things that's most important to do is to protect your children. So the sooner the children are brought into the equation, the better. So know your financial, uh, know your financial matters well. If you don't know your financial matters very well, you might be well served to consult a divorce financial analyst or a divorce financial consultant. Those are the people who sometimes will sit down with both parties, or one, it depends on, on what your preference is, and they will help you to understand what your finances are, because all of this divorce action is focused on the future. We know you're living in the here and now, but you are going to create a lifestyle that works separately for you and your co-parent, and you are going to, probably more importantly, develop a parenting plan to work with that co-parent. Uh, I think the most important thing that I've told a lot of people is when you're here and now and thinking about this divorce, you need to focus on the future. Mm -hmm. Focus on what you want your family to look like five years from now, ten years from now, at your child's high school graduation, at your child's college graduation, when your children get married, when you have a grandchild, because all of that is going to be affected by every decision and every action that you take right now. And that's, that's a strong thought. thought. <laughs> it's, yes, it's crazy. Um, but it's the truth. Because we know that every time somebody takes an action in a divorce, it has a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And it exactly. affects it, right? It affects us, it affects our children, it affects our extended family, it affects our community groups, it affects a lot of things that we tend not to think about. So I firmly believe that people should, before they pull the trigger and file those papers, figure out some things. Think about whether you can have some kind of mediated agreement with your soon-to-be former spouse, and you can sometimes do that as a pre-suit mediation, meaning you don't have to file any papers in court in order to start the ball rolling. That has a lot of benefits. One, you're not under that kind of time pressure, and two, you're not paying a lawyer by the minute. Because mm -hmm. remember, when you hire a lawyer at $500 an hour or $250 an hour, that seems like a big number. But when you have a conversation with that lawyer, they charge you by the minute. And we've all heard of people who get those attorney's bills and are shocked to see how much the time they've spent on the phone with their lawyers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's one of the most important things to do. That's such great basic information that, Roz, we really haven't talked about this that much, and, and we've done I don't know how many shows, so this is great information. Awesome. Thanks, Joni. I, the yeah. other thing that I, I would like people to become aware of is a system called collaborative divorce. Now, some people might know about it, but let me explain briefly what it is. The collaborative divorce movement started many years ago, and attorneys who are part of the collaborative divorce collectives are working with an agreement between the lawyers themselves, a mental health professional, sometimes a mediator, and a financial consultant. So what will happen is if you look into the collaborative process and it appeals to you, you can contact one of these lawyers or a mental health professional or a lawyer who just knows about it and ask some questions because the the fees tend to be lower the um, the distress caused to the family tends to be a lot lower because all of these professionals are focused on doing the right thing for the family so that there is less animosity and nobody walks away destroyed mm -hmm. and it's a team effort yes mm -hmm. absolutely Mm -hmm. We all know it takes a team. Mm -hmm. 
and and the thing of it is they're also and we have talked about this before where with collaborative law that you sign an agreement that you are not going to court is that correct exactly mm -hmm. that is correct mm -hmm. and also with the collaborative agreement if you do make the decision to go to court the attorney who has been working with you throughout the collaborative process cannot and will not represent represent you if you decide to litigate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so essentially you're starting from square one what I really like about that process is that the mental health professional is included in in the team and that adds a dimension that's much more child focused family focused and helps mitigate a lot of the conflict that is likely to come up in a, I think in a, in a better way I agree mm -hmm. I absolutely mm -hmm. agree Definitely. I think that one of the best things that parents can do even before they start anything is come up with a parenting plan even if you're doing it by yourself and the other party is not interested in discussing it right now, create a picture of what you would like your children's lives to look at. Because as we have discussed and we know, it's sometimes called Mom's Day or Dad's Day or Mom's Weekend or Dad's Weekend. And it's not. It's your child's day. Mm. It is your child's day, night, weekend, vacation. It's not Mom's vacation time or mm -hmm. dad's vacation time. If that's just not fair. And sometimes what people tend to do is they underestimate how difficult this divorce is for their children. Yes. So if you can focus on the children, as you know very well, Roz, if you focus on the children and make it a child-centered divorce and go with any kind of um, any kind of process that will keep you out of the court, I think that you're light years ahead of anybody who says in an angry way or just you know having been fed up, okay, I'm done, I'm hiring a lawyer and I'm filing. Mm -hmm. So part of this just just a minute. minute. So, so, so part, part of, of this um, um, plan, plan in, in fact, fact if, if you can, you also, can also mute yourself at the top because we're getting a little echo. Um, should be a little mute button there. Okay. Um, part of this child um, or this plan that you're talking about doing before you even maybe go to an attorney what would be some of the things you want to make sure that you include in that can you kind of fill us in on that Cindy? absolutely what a parenting plan typically looks at is every day of the week and maybe for a full year what your child's schedule is like and how you believe you can share time with the other parent so that your child gets the benefit of both parents to the extent possible. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I've worked with parents who say, you know what, I have to go to work at this particular time. It would be great if dad could take my child to school and I will pick my child up from school and we'll, we'll agree on how we're going to exchange our children, not so that they're carrying, they don't want to carry backpacks to school with a change of clothing. Mm. So you want to set up a system to the extent you can so that your children feel as normal as possible going through this process. Think about birthday parties that your children have to go to if you're alternating weekends with your spouse. You know, what does that look like? Let's say your child is with dad and you, let's say you have two children the children are with dad and then one of the children has a birthday party and the other child has a birthday party somewhere else well mm -hmm. you know I mean sometimes people say you know what he's with dad figure it out they're with dad figure it out I think that the best thing you can do for your children is have open and honest constant communication with their other parent so that if dad's stuck like that mom can say you know what I'll take, I'll take one child to the birthday party, you take the other child, and then we'll meet up afterwards, and they'll go home, and they'll have dinner with you, Dad, you know, because that's the way it is. But I think it's important for parents to look past their own personal agendas mm -hmm. in order to make things easier for everybody. I call, I call being, being the adult. adult. <laughs> always. Always yeah. be the adult and always take the high road. And, and the reality is, the more flexible you are, the smoother 
the, the years ahead of co-parenting will be because inevitably both sides are going to need favors and life's going to be filled with changes and so if you get in the pattern of being able to do that for one another with one another the children are the ones who are getting the, the benefit of it all. You're so right Roz, you are absolutely right. You mm. never want to be that kind of parent who's really thinking of themselves first, although I have to say it is important when you're going through this process to give yourself a lot of self-care, to give yourself a lot of self-love. Make sure you do have time for yourself. Keep your sanity because that's critical in this process. Don't be a doormat. Don't say, okay, whatever he says is fine because I'm just not going to stir the pot. No. Part of this process is building up a relationship that has not existed necessarily before when it comes to your finances, your lifestyle, and your parenting. Mm -hmm. And I look at it that the weekend that you have off, if they're gone with the father or the mother, that's a good weekend to work on that self-care. It yes. is. It is. Mm -hmm. However, however, if the other parent gets into a bind, sure, be flexible always, about it. Always be available. That's mm -hmm. my motto. Always mm -hmm. be available for your children because years from now, that's what they'll remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I know as far as um, the, the last thing we were going to talk about was the seven step process to go through a divorce and maybe we can go through some of these and maybe we've already covered some but I think this is really important so Cindy why don't you dive into that and give us some info on that. Okay so here's my seven step process. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's instantaneous but it always seems to work. The letters that I use to stand for the seven steps are S T E. E V A C. Stevac. Doesn't have any particular meaning. Okay. S stands for stop. When you have to do something, the very first thing that I find works best is to stop before you act, before you react, because you always want to respond, not react yes. to a situation, to a person. That's what you want to do. So first stop. Then think. Take a couple of minutes to think. What do I really want here? What's going to serve my children best? What do I know? Okay, so you're stopping and you're thinking. That's a really good start. The first E is for educate. If there's something that you just don't know about and you're faced with making a decision, spend a little time educating yourself. Get your resources in order and figure things out. Most things in life do not have to be handled instantaneously. And those that do, you'll find you will do much better if you take these steps. The second E is, is for evaluate. So after you have your education, you're stopping your thinking, now evaluate. How do I want to do this? What do I want to accomplish? What, uh, what will be the, the fallout, if any? So, that's the, second that's the second E for evaluate. Take some time, step back a little bit. The V is for vision. By that I mean create a vision of what you want the outcome to be for your entire family, for yourself, for your children, and sometimes even for your extended family because we know every decision has a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So you create this vision. And then the C is for courage. We all need courage. And you need courage to, to take steps. You need courage to stop yourself. But you need courage before you give your response. And I think it serves all of us best to go through this process. And as I said, sometimes when you're doing this, it's going to be pretty quick. But sometimes not so much. Mm -hmm. So when, when things feel like they're, you're, like you're getting that instinct, that fight or flight kind of feeling, stop. Just stop. It's mm. the best thing to do. I call it become conscious and be in the moment here and just pull it all together, take a few deep breaths and like you said, stop and just think about things for a minute. And, right. and, and really what direction? I look at it as you, you're looking at a fork in the road. Which, which one do I want? Do I want to go down the uh, the, the path that hopefully it can all work out with a smooth um, con, uh, 
do I get some, yeah results or do I want to go down the path that I know is going to start just the whole um, upsetting of everybody so it's really important to be conscious of that. So true so true and you know what Joni even if you decide that you have to make a decision that is going to stir the pot a little bit because that's ultimately what you've decided to do while you're going through this process and creating a vision and educating yourself, you start to think about the repercussions of this decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's always, always repercussions. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that people know how to get a hold of you because you just have such a great insight and can offer so much information. So the best way to get a hold of you is by email. Uh, my first and last name, Cindy Harari at AOL.com. Mm -hmm. I also have um, some articles that I've published online at ezine articles. That's e z i n e articles dot com, mm -hmm. and so you can you can reach me through my email very easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're actually in the state of Florida, is that correct? I am. Okay. All right. Yes. Especially Cindy, I had a question. Um, there's a lot of terms that we throw around, and I was wondering if there are legal uh, definitions or differences between co-parenting, shared parenting, parallel parenting, and a lot of these these terms. I use the, a lot of them interchangeably in articles because I'm trying to get people to work together in a cooperative way. But are there any distinctions that that we should know about in in referring to our former spouses in different ways? Yes, um, there absolutely are. For example, in Florida, we don't talk about custody of children anymore. We talk about time sharing. There is no, there is no concept of custody any longer. Um, the concept of parallel parenting, that's, that's a concept that means that when you have children sharing time between mom's house and dad's house, or mom's house and mom's house, or dad's house and dad's house, the two parents may do things completely differently and that's called parallel parenting. If you are shared parenting or co-parenting, there may be a lot more interaction between the two co-parents. And you know, co-parents I think is probably the best um, the best term to use, although re in reality we're parents. Mm -hmm. You know, we're parents. We're not co-parents. We we you know, we've had these children together, so we're still parents. But yes, and I think it's very important to choose your words very wisely. Um, I have been very careful in my life, in my situations, to never refer to my former husband as my ex. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way that sounds. Wow. I don't want to he ever have my children hear, oh, the ex is coming, or this is how I feel about the ex. Uh, to me, that's like a big X, like it never happened, and this is a bad thing, and I just don't go for that. You know, you say you're my children's dad, you know, or you say um, my former husband. husband my fo I've always used exactly. the word former. My former yes. husband. I uh, that's exactly my preference. You know, mm -hmm. my my former husband. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's important, and I think the more that um, everyone can read and understand about these alternatives and um, processes, the better everyone will be at coming to a really good outcome. Because when people say their divorce is over, it's not. It's, it's never starting. really over. <laughs> it's it, just doesn't, starting. it doesn't start and end. There's a, a stage before you file when it's all talk and sometimes your children hear you because they hear everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's the, the during, the, the divorce stage when it's active, but it could be a collaborative process or mediation where you're not screaming and yelling at each other and working things out. And then there's the aftermath. And there's always aftermath. So it can be good. It can be fine. It's not going to be 100% smooth and wonderful and happy-go-lucky all the time. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, but one of the most valuable resources that I want to share is a website called uptoparents.org. It's just like it sounds, U-P-T-O. P-A-R-E-N-T-S dot org. And this is a website created by colleagues of mine, uh, Charlie Asher, who's a lawyer mediator, and his wife, Barb, who is a therapist. It is confidential. 
It is free, and you can go there. There are sections for parents, for professionals, for um, and for well, there's sections for, for parents and professionals and educators and anybody who's involved with divorce. And what this fabulous website will do is it will give you so much information and you can plug in your own information so that you will understand so much better how this divorce affects your children and what you can do to bypass those pitfalls. Mm. Anything to do to help help it be as well run as smooth as possible through this whole process. Absolutely. That's the bottom line. Yes. How do you feel about, um, about online scheduling tools for co parenting? Um I think that they can work. I know that in some cases where there is a lot of animosity and difficulty communicating that they are very, very helpful. My preference always is to try to create enough peace so that even if you don't have anything else to do with your former spouse and all you are doing this dismantling of your business relationship, you will always be in the business of raising your children. And so if that is your business, then you really don't need to talk to that former spouse about anything else. So if what you can narrow your conversations to is simply scheduling, then that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It takes time, enough. it it's takes enough. practice and guidance. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cindy, just a great, great uh, show here. Lots of information. I'm thrilled you were here today to share all of this with us. Thank you, Joni. It's a pleasure to be here. And, and um, also, um, Roz, fill us in a little bit because you have a special month here. Yes, January is International Child-Centered Divorce Month, and we have divorce experts all over the world who contribute no-cost services and resources and advice and information on divorce and parenting issues at a special website that's up on, in January. So if you go to divorcedparentsupport.com forward slash ebook, You'll put in your email address, get my free ebook, and then you'll get a link to all the other resources available. And we have some fabulous audio programs, video programs, ebooks, coaching services, all free and all there to focus on helping you through the divorce and parenting equation. So divorcedparentsupport.com slash ebook. Thank you, Joni. And what have you been up to? Well, also, I just wanted to say that both Cindy and I are part of that, so we're excited to be part of the uh, the special month. And also, if you go to divorceview.com, you'll get to see this show again, and then also you have a link to our podcast of this show. And then also you can learn a little bit more about Roz is there, myself is there, and we both offer such great programs to help you, whether it's with your children or for myself, I'm on the communication end of how to emotionally get along and that has a lot to do with how to get along with your former to be or former so we're both all here all of us here to support you in any way we can Absolutely. so thanks again ladies for being here great show and to our listeners tune in and uh, go to divorceview.com to learn more in the meantime thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time